This is Let's Be Clear with Shannon Doherty. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Jill Martin. You may know me from the Today Show. Um, I was a sportscaster. I've really popped up everywhere. Um, but today, my most important title is breast cancer survivor. And um, this will be emotional for me for a variety of reasons, which I'll get into. But um, what an honor to be asked to do this. I was actually booked on or about to be booked on Shannon's um, podcast before she passed. And we never got to meet. But we have um, a mutual best friend in Leslie Sloan who worked with her. And so I feel like I knew her and I also feel like she's looking down and so proud that we're continuing her messaging right now. So um, I feel that energy. And so I hope you could feel that too. Um, So this, I was supposed to be with her and I, Shannon, hope I'm going to make you and your family proud by carrying on this podcast in a way that we will raise awareness. And for people listening who are going through treatment, who, who or survivors like me who are just sort of coming out of a fog. Um, I hope this helps. I'm going to be very raw and very revealing. I so admired Shannon. First of all, I grew up watching her shows and was obsessed with her and like had posters of her kind of obsessed. And um, so her story really resonated when it started because I was, always thought to myself, you know, when you look at people and you think they have it all, you know, people will watch on TV and say, or on Instagram and say, oh, she's great. Or, oh, she's, you never know what someone's going through or battling. And so, um, like her, I, um, I had breast cancer have, I mean, I say had, I don't like to say that because I'm now considered cancer free, but you know, um, you're very always as a cancer survivor, scared to say that. Um, and I also went through uh, a divorce I'm going through like she did. So um, what a badass she um, she was because I think I'm one of the strongest people I know. And um, every day is a challenge. Every day is a fork in the road. And so I'm going to start at the beginning of my story. So I'm 48 years old. I um, grew up lucky. Like, I still think I'm the luckiest person in the world, even though I've been through hell and back this past year um, and not fully back. So last June, I had gone to the doctor and they said to me, did you ever get tested for the BRCA gene? And I said, oh, no, um, because breast cancer runs in my family. Let me start there. My mother um, had DCIS, early breast cancer, had a double mastectomy, is healthy and listening right now. Um, and then um, my grandmother died of breast cancer. And so um, I never really got the chance as an adult to be with her, but I know she's with me and I'm wearing uh, charms from everybody who we've lost. And so I know she's with me too. Um, so I was always expecting, like my mother and my grandmother, we have the same hands, we have the same, I was always expecting the day But, you know, it's like anything. You never really um, you never really are ready to be told you have cancer ever until you're told you have cancer. So last June, I go in. I don't know what my my nose is so red, probably crying, but excuse the way that looks right now. Um, Maybe just from crying, I'll try to come down. Um, Last June, I went into um, the doctor and they said, um, did you take the BRCA test? And I said, um, no, I don't have to, because if one of your parents has the BRCA gene, they you have a 50% chance of getting it. So breast cancer runs in my mother's family, not in my father's family. Um, so my mother was negative, even though she had breast cancer. So I thought I didn't have to take it. They said, take it anyway. Maybe it's on your father's side. And I said, breast cancer doesn't run on my father's side. So in between Zoom calls, I literally took a spit test into a tube and sent it in. I forgot about it. Three weeks later, June 26, three o'clock, I get a call and um, they're like, you have the BRCA mutation. Um, You have a 60 to 90% chance of getting breast cancer. Um, 
we suggest that you talk to your doctor about screenings um, at your age about preventive surgery, which would be a double mastectomy, getting your ovaries out, your fallopian tubes. But the good news is, um, you know, you, you, you just had a mammogram, you just had a sonogram, you're clear, so you're catching it beforehand. Um, it was like, I can remember the call and I remember thinking to myself, what? Like, I just had a clean mammogram. I just had a clean sonogram. I'm positive for this. Okay. So I got connected with the best doctors that I found through mutual friends, went into Dr. Elisa Port. She uh, told me everything I would need to do for the preventive surgery. I said, okay. She said, you're so, you know, you're lucky that you caught it before, although this is a lot. You know, it was like surgeries and then you go into fake menopause because I'm not a menopause. I mean, it was the whole thing was a lot. So I go in to get the MRI to get the preventive surgery. So this is end of June. Now let's fast forward like a week later, I go in to get the MRI. And um, I'm in the room and I see chaos. Like one doctor comes in, then the next, doc- next doctor comes in and I, I looked up and I just said, I said, just tell me I have cancer. Right. And she said, you do. We don't know how bad it is. So had I not gotten that preventive test, which is why I'm shouting from the rooftops that if you have any kind of cancer in your family, not just breast cancer, please ask your doctor if a genetic test is appropriate. Um, I would not be here today to be telling this story for Shannon and pushing this movement forward of early testing. So um, from there, it's been earth shattering. I mean, so that was last June. So July, I had a double mastectomy. After I woke up from the mastectomy, they said it's in a lymph node. So you'll likely need chemo. Um, I had taken a test called the Anka test, which gives you the chance of reoccurrence. I was like a 30, which is a high number. I, I think that was the number. Um, so I had a 40% chance of reoccurrence. So they said, you're going to have to do the most aggressive chemo, um, which was, um, so the mastectomy, let me, let me, um, I, I don't want to be scattered here. The mastectomy, they find one lymph node. They took 17 out. Okay. So we do the mastectomy. Then double mastectomy. Then I go in for chemo. I did four red devils. And then I had a choice between doing 12 taxels or four. And I was like, let's just like get this party started and move on.com. So um, chemotherapy, um, I cold capped. So um, I was able to save 30% of my hair, which now it's kind of growing back. It's a bob. It's cute, right? Today was the first day I could was able to put it in a pony, but I used to have like Farrah Fawcett hair. So um, I tried to save it and it was a 12 hour process. They literally put like a cold, it's on my Instagram. You could see a cold cap on my head and you freeze the follicles for 12 hours before and after treatment. So I did the four red devils, the four taxels that ended in November. Um, We'll get into the chemotherapy in a minute because anybody going through it, my heart is just so with you. Um, and, you know, if you want to talk about cold capping, happy to talk about that, too, um, at another time with the cold cappers who can really educate you. I sort of want to give my personal experience. I always say I'm not a doctor. I'm not a professional cold capper. This is just my journey and my opinion. And, you know, my messaging is just for early genetic testing and to ask your doctors if it's appropriate. So um, so I, I get through chemotherapy barely. I mean... I think about it every day still. So that ended November 27th last year, the chemo. And it was on Thanksgiving day. And I sat with my parents who, um, that was the hardest part of this whole thing was basically watching them watch me is heartbreaking. Um, And um, then I had radiation 16 straight days that took me through the new year. Then I had, my end of January, my um, my ovaries and fallopian tubes taken out. Then I had um, reconstruction a couple of months ago. Then I got divorced. 
So that's a year. I want to say that the year was earth shattering and heartbreaking in so many ways. There are silver linings, but Shannon went through so many different versions of this and um, her ending was not what her family and she really fought, I was told. And our mutual friend, Leslie, would tell me, I'd ask about her all the time. How is she doing it? You know? So what I want to say is, as I put the punctuation on that part of the journey for the year, is that you can hold two things simultaneously. That I'm the strongest person that I know. And... I am grateful and I feel lucky and I know that my higher purpose is to educate and advocate for genetic testing so that no other person, this, this part of cancer could have been avoided had I known. And I am also heartbroken and sad and I've never once said why me because I know why me. It's to be able to do things like this. Um, but I want to, I want to really say, you know, they say like you're initiated into this club that you never wanted to be in. But when you meet the people in the club, I mean, the most badass, powerful, I don't even know if you're allowed to curse on the show, but I am, you can bleep me. Um, the most powerful, strong, loving, caring warriors that I've met on this journey. Um, and so many beautiful silver linings have come out of this for me as a human being. And, um, you know, as me being able to share my story, but I do not want to take away from the heartbreak that this causes and the toll it has on your life. I mean, so I want to like get my composure, take a sip of water. I was stage two, I think it was 2B. Um, that was the first thing. But my oncologist says, we threw the kitchen sink at you because that was your best chance for um, it not coming back, which is, you know, the only thing I could ask for. I don't really, not really ever scared about it coming back, meaning that's not where my mind goes. Right now, I'm just like, you know, like survivors trying to like pick up the pieces. I say I have disco balls all over my house. I could show you, but um, a million beautiful pieces, sh pieces shattered and somehow beautifully put back together. You know, I don't look like me. You know, people say, you look so pretty. I like your hair short. And I so appreciate that. But imagine, you know, having this Farrah Fawcett hair. And again, you could hold both things. You could want to be healthy and also want to look like yourself. And then I wake up from a fog, you know, which is right now just like waking up from this fog and I just don't look like me, but it's a change. You know, my oncologist said you, most survivors say before and after cancer, you know, and I think that's with any trauma, you could sort of say, oh, that was before and that was after. So um, I am now choosing to take things from Jill 1.0 prior to cancer and what people, places, things, jobs, um, energy belongs in this new life. So that's where I am now. That's sort of like the capture of the story. Um, I don't like to talk about the divorce in length because we're still in it. You know, divorce, unfortunately, takes a long time. Um, I wish it didn't but it does. And all I could say is, is that, um, you know, some fairy tales have a beginning, middle and end. And some parts of your life are just not meant to make it into the new. And so um, it's a lot to deal with all at once. And, but I'm doing it. And um, I actually got a call today. I wasn't ready to get set up, but somebody said, I have this like great, person for you. And, you know, I asked the few questions of the things that are important to me. And one of them is, you know, you need someone who is like, all right, here's the roadshow. 
hand me the popcorn, you know, but somebody who is strong enough and confident enough to be able to deal with what I've been through and what I've gone through publicly. And that is, you know, as I put my energy into the universe and manifest what I'm looking for next, um, which I'm not rushing into anything, you really do need somebody who is, who is able to deal with life because life has gotten lifey. So the genetic testing. So let me go back. So what my main, you know, everybody who has gone through a version of this, like Olivia Munn just came out showing her uh, double mastectomy scars. And I thought that was so beautiful because her message is early testing, but also that you can still be yourself and still be sexy and still be beautiful and still be confident. She did this collaboration with Skims. My main story is my part of cancer could have been avoided had I had genetic testing. So I look at pictures of me as a baby. I look at my wedding photos that happened two years ago. I look at pictures of me in college and I say, God, I wish I could tell that girl, like, go get tested and get the preventive surgery or the screenings or whatever your doctor suggests so that you don't have to go through cancer. And I did it publicly on the Today Show because I felt like we share the happy and wow, what a platform I had. God gave me this so that I can use my platform to say, hey, everybody, they don't tell you doctors to get this genetic test. And if you have cancer in your family, please go get the test. So for example, I know thousands of lives that I have potentially saved who have gone out, gotten the test and are now under screening and doctor's care. One in particular close to home, my college roommate, Melissa, who has two beautiful daughters. She saw my story and also obviously heard it from me, went out and got the test. She had the BRCA gene on her father's side as well. And she got the preventive surgery. And every morning I get a text from her and her husband thanking me for saving her life because if she has the BRCA gene, she has a 60 to 90% chance of getting breast cancer. Nobody would take those odds. And now she can have her daughters screened at the appropriate time, 25, 26. So those are the kinds of stories. And that is my message. Like when Shannon looks down right now and says like, okay, which part of this are you attacking? You know, I feel like she's like up there saying like, like every one of you, like here, you take this podcast and you use it to spread your version of the message to save lives. So there's mine. If you have pancreatic, prostate, any kind of a lot of cancer in your family, you ask your doctor, hey, is a BRCA test appropriate for me? If your mother's taking the test and your father's taking the test and they're negative, then you're negative. Move on.com with that part of it. But, you know, everyone says like, the mammogram, the day I was diagnosed, my mammogram was clean. The mammogram is the most perfect test, is the, is the, I shouldn't say perfect, is the best test we have right now. But no test is perfect. My sonogram in January, sonograms are just snapshots. They do a snapshot. They take as many shots. Let's take 10 shots. They missed it. What could you do? I mean, no test is perfect. It's, I think, 93%. That's a good number. But for once in my life, I was in the 7%. So you still take your mammogram. You still do the sonogram. The MRI is what picked it up, thank goodness, or I probably wouldn't be here today. So that's my messaging. That's my messaging in terms of awareness. Um, when, I, when people say, are you done with cancer? Um, you're done. You're good. Look at you. I don't think I'll ever be done. I heard that that changes with time, but I don't see that as my journey. I think about chemotherapy every day. I think about cold capping every day. Um, I spend my days on with people who are a few weeks, a few months behind me so that I can educate and say, okay, when you're going into Taxol, for example, please ask for you know the bags Freeze your hands and toes so you don't get neuropathy. Don't just freeze them. Sit there for the entire time and keep your hands on the ice. You know, I say ask for an extra bag of fluid. After every chemotherapy, when I was cold capping, I said, 
please give me that extra fl- fluid to flesh out my system. Um, drink a lot of water. Like these are tips that I give. You know, I'm known on the Today Show for giving tips and tricks. Unfortunately, I know a little too much now, but these are just, you know, tips and tricks that I found. And also giving yourself the grace. You know, every day I wake up and I'm on two safety net pills. So I'm on Limparza and I'm on Letrozole. And um, so I started those in June. So now I'm whatever, how many months? We're in the beginning of November. So four months out. Um, When I started the pills, um, the combination of the doses made me very, very depressed. And I called my doctor and I had the wherewithal to say, I'm having really bad thoughts. I don't think this is right. I don't normally feel like this. Like I'm a person who just like, literally I have sparkles on. I wake up every day and put on sparkles. Like I only want happy and I see silver linings and everything, but I was having these thoughts. So they adjusted my dose and I felt better. So that's another thing. Like you really need to be your own best friend. You know, every day I wake up and there's a fork in the road and I say to myself, am I going to get up and am I going to fight or am I going to pull the covers up over my head? And let me tell you something, no one would blame me. But most days I get up and I fight. One of the silver linings to this whole entire thing was that, you know, I used to run around looking for more and more and more. And I think a lot of, I'm 48 now. So I think a lot of entrepreneurs will tell you that, you know, I, um, I worked through my entire chemotherapy. So get this, I would go to the Today Show, do my segment because you're your strongest when you're going in for your next chemotherapy. So like it's every other week. So I would go in in the morning, get hair and makeup, put on lashes because I like lost my lashes. So I didn't even have any do the today show and then go straight to chemotherapy. Do you know how confusing that is in your brain to like be on TV and to be, you know, going on with your life. And then, you know, for that moment and for those moments, I would say to myself, just go back to your old life. You don't have cancer for these moments. So I would do my thing. I would do my steals and deals. I would do my segments, my interviews, and then I would go to chemo. So, um, but the rest of the time I was laying in bed saying like, I'm an entrepreneur, my brain's working, but I physically cannot get up. I felt terrible. I never threw up, not one time, but anyone who's going through it, you just feel not like yourself and you're on steroids. And the steroids make you crazy. They just do. So as nice as I tried to be, and I think I'm one of the nicest people I know, it was very hard. You know, I um, I said things, you know, at times when I wouldn't have, my mom would try to just like be there for me. And, you know, it's just, cancer is more powerful to me than any of us. And so, um I'm a little scattered in this part of the story, but I just, I just want everyone to know, like, I, I feel what you're going through and understand sort of this fork in the road. The silver lining was I was running, 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 wanting more and more and more. And um, I said to myself, what can I do that allows me to be, use my mind, not my time. Like I want to be an entrepreneur that gets, success from using my brain from the 48 years I've put in all the hard work, not traveling all the time, running, grabbing, going out, going to every event. So what I did was I took my hero items, which I'm wearing one of them now, which is um, a Sherpa lounger. I, I'll show you like a few things, but I have these um, jackets that are indoor, outdoor. I made a hoodie, an animal uh, buddy and a blanket. And I said, these are my hero items. I sold millions of units of these let me go out and get all the licenses. So the MBA, the WNBA, college. And let me just take my hero item. And on the back of it, I'll put a logo. This is my special next one. So I used my business as a canvas 
to spark conversations around genetic testing. So October 1st, I launched this new business, jillmartin.com, and I got all the licenses, which is takes hours of filling out forms and going back and forth. I mean, you have to have the right items, but I got them. And almost everybody said, you could do a special edition breast cancer awareness lounger and turn the logo pink and use your platform and use your items to spark conversations around advocacy and around early genetic testing. So that's where I am right now, bringing you up to date. I am, since October 1st, have been like on a rampage. Like I sleep where I can, but I am like, go get your test. And in the process, I'm keeping you comfy and cozy. And that's what I've been doing. So I literally just got back, like went to Penn State. Michigan, turning the logo pink, activated at the Knicks game, turning the logo pink and telling everyone about genetic testing through my items. Um, I'm resting a lot. I am starting to date again. Um, I am managing the pills. I am working with a trauma therapist because the helper needs help. Like I've always been the one where that people lean on, you know, they come to me for the answers and I'm still that person. So once again, let me bring it back. You could hold two things at once. I'm still the helper. I'm still the person that everybody comes to in my group for advice, for right and wrong, for what's the best thing to do. 98% I'm getting it right, but the helper needs help. And so I am for the first time asking favors, asking people to help me, asking for easy wins. And I'm really proud of that because I never did that before. I always, it was like, I got it. I'm good. You know, um, so that's where I am. I mean, I, my heart goes out to anybody going through it. My heart goes out to caretakers who are with you because only the strongest, only I'm talking to this one girl. Her name is Bridget. And she's fabulous. And she is going through chemo right now. And um, her husband is awesome. My and supporting her and um, my other girlfriend. um, She has a best friend who is there for her for everything. You have to ask for help. Nobody could do this by themselves. So um, my advice, if you're going through it or just got diagnosed, is I'm sorry that you have to go through this. My heart breaks. And make a decision. Make a decision how you're going to handle it. Um, I was never a day-by-day person. I am now. What are my wins today? Do I need to rest today? Do I need to ask for help today? Do I need to uh, be my own best friend? Um, Stay off of Google. Stay off of you know, there's groups and support groups, but pick your North star. Like I do not crowdsource for my decisions, whether it be about cancer or whether it be about um, which color lounger I should put a pick a pink Knicks logo on. I um, have who I think is the best in that area. I ask their opinion and I move on. Sometimes you're going to make mistakes. Sometimes you're not, but at least you are um, not driving yourself nuts. Um, because what you say to yourself is the most important thing. You are listening all the time. So what you say to yourself, you're always listening. I watch what I say to myself. And I just want to say like Shannon's family and friends, like it shouldn't have been like this. And thank you for continuing the conversation. And helping other people. I mean, I think, and I don't know her, but from what my friend Leslie says, who is one of my best friends and a total badass, she only surrounds herself with badass people, Leslie Sloan. Like, she didn't want this. She wanted to fight. And so I'm doing that too, Shannon. And um, I hope I can come back and I hope I can give you updates and continue this conversation. Um, My biggest thing right now to take from this is 
if your mother or father are alive or biological or you know history, ask them about BRCA testing. Call your doctor right now and just say, hey, is this something I should do? That's the biggest favor. I'm asking you for help. Anyone listening, that's the biggest favor you could do for me because I didn't have to go through this. And also reach out to me. I am available on DM. And thank you so much for having me and letting my sh- letting me share my story. I promise on behalf of all survivors, I'll continue to fight. And Shannon, I will continue to help spread your story. And so jillmartin.com is where you could find me at Jill Martin is are my handles. I made it very easy. And I hope you'll, my Sherpa loungers are available with all your favorite teams and, um, and uh, we can personalize them with your name. And um, I have a special one that um, says warrior that's coming out at Saks, which is very exciting and they're supporting. So yeah, I hope to keep you comfy and cozy. And I hope that when you wear these, you say this is a Joe Martin and um, it just makes the conversation, you know, keep going. So thank you so much for having me. This was such an honor. I can't tell you. I only wish that it happened when Shannon was still with us, but maybe it was meant to be like this and she just wanted me to be able to continue the conversation. So I'm going to take that energetically and sending love to everybody. And thank you for having me.